Well, good morning and welcome to my studio. Uh, today, I'm going to try something a little more elaborate. Uh, I'm going to work on the birch trees today, but it's really important um, when I talk about what colors I'm going to be using and how I mix the colors for the birch tree. So we're actually going to try shooting from a couple cameras today so I can have a camera focused on my palette while I'm mixing the colors. So let's hope that all works out. Okay, so I'm going to mix my colors. You can see I've got my palette laid out. I've actually got it taped down so that I don't inadvertently move it uh, out of the camera view. Let's talk about the colors that I have here first. So I've got a cadmium yellow medium, got a cadmium orange, I've got a lizarin crimson, I've got magenta, a little fly buzzing around too. Uh, I've got a dioxazine purple, I've got an ultramarine blue, and I've got a phthalo blue. And then I also have over here a carbon black. Now you can see this, these two little things of this white stuff here. That's actually an impasto medium. So some of the colors in the um, water soluble oils are really, really slow drying. They take forever. Uh, so carbon black is one and so is alizarin crimson. So this impasto medium is actually ground marble dust that's mixed in with an oil medium. It's almost like a body filler for cars, um, but it's made for paints. And what that does, when you mix it with your paints, it may, first of all makes them much thicker, so you can do thick impasto strokes and it will dry much stronger, uh, but will also dry much faster. And that's the thing I want. Um, knock on wood, I'm in the fortunate position often of having paintings uh, going out the door um, still sometimes wet or a little bit tacky um, so the sooner they dry for me the better so I just know anytime I'm doing a painting if uh, if I'm using those colors if there's if there's potentially going to be some sort of urgency in terms of getting it out the door uh, or a deadline then I want it to dry in a few days as opposed to I mean, if I put the black or the alizarin crimson on thick, it could take three weeks or a month to dry. So now I'm going to squeeze out some titanium white. That's the only white I use. I know a lot of people use like lead white for mixing or flake white. I use titanium white, period. That's the only white that I use. And mainly just because that's what I got used to. There's no kind of fancy uh, theoretical reason why. So when, when I paint the birch trees, you have to think in terms of the birch trees themselves are white. So that's the local color of the birch tree is a white. But what we end up seeing, what our eye sees, is the local color of the birch tree uh, also impacted by the reflected light that hits it. And basically what that means is, I mean, in, in absolutely pure neutral light, that's just grays, um, and that's incredibly boring. Um, but in the sunlight, which is a warm yellowish orange light, then that means that the areas that are tending towards the sun or facing towards the sun are going to have a warmer tone, um, right up to including a light yellow right next to the sun. And as we move away from the sun, it's going to, uh, colors um, tend towards the complement of the primary light source. So the primary light source is yellowy orange. So the complement is a purpley blue. But also, whenever you're outside, you also have that secondary light source of the sky. And so the sky, you think in terms of a secondary light source, it's like if there was a giant blue fluorescent light shining down on everything. So anything that's not struck by the primary light source is going to have the influence of that blue light hitting it. So the areas that turn away from the sun, they're going to be in the blue tones for two reasons. One, because that's the complement of the primary light source, the sun. And 
because it's being hit by the blue of the sky that just kind of seeps into everything. And so what I'm doing here in my palette is I'm just mixing almost like a color wheel, section of the color wheel, from kind of light blue into kind of a, and this is a, this is a pure uh, phthalo blue, which is a, the absolute pure blue of one of the three primaries. Ultramarine blue is a little bit more purpley, and then into the purple, um, and then around to these warmer tones. And it, I also want it to get lighter and lighter as we move towards the warm tones because it's actually going to be struck by the primary light source, which is the sun. And so that is going to make it actually lighter in value. Um, and the, the way this works, it's actually going to be at its absolute darkest, kind of in the middle of the tree. As we come around to the side facing totally away from the sun, it gets what's called a bounce light um, coming back in, which would be this lighter blue. So it actually gets a little lighter on the shadow side um, than it is in the middle of the tree. And the middle of the tree is where it's getting no light hitting it, so that's where it's going to be the darkest. I actually need one more color uh, for my lightest blues. It's going to tend more into the turquoise. So let's mix that in a little. And now this, you'll see that I've got my colors. I always go to great lengths to kind of mix my colors the way I think I need them. Uh, but then I also do a lot of mixing on the palette while I'm actually painting. But this is a really important thing to start off, to get your colors basically kind of mixed in the way that you want them. Because you can see when I'm mixing with a knife, um, I don't end up wasting a lot of paint. I can squeeze most of the paint off here and it stays on the palette. When you mix with your brush, your brush sucks up a lot of paint, and then you end up washing that in when you wash your brush. So you're, you're washing a lot of paint uh, down the drain and I think I've mentioned before, I hate throwing out paint. I mean, I go through enough paint as it is, um, but I don't want to be wasting a lot of paint when I'm mixing my colors. And so these are going to be the basic colors of the birch tree. This is going to be the color of the, um, the knots, but I'm also going to mix a little bit of red in with it on one side of the black so that those areas of the uh, knots where it's closer to the sun are going to be like a black with a warm tone and I'll mix some of the phthalo blue on the other side so that these areas of the knots um, that are kind of farther away from the sun are going to be a cooler black. Um, and that's basically it in terms of how I set up my palette. I'm going to switch now to actually start painting the birch tree, so I'll get the, uh, get the camera off my palette and focus it more on the canvas. Okay, so my colors are all mixed. Uh, I've got the other camera shooting, hopefully close up, uh, closer up on the trees and in focus. And I'll actually start blocking in the birch tree. And so the very first thing that I need is my photo. Now when I go from my photo, it's not an absolute literal uh, translation of a photo, but it does just give me an idea of, of the basic kind of composition and colors, in particular on the birch trees, just in terms of where and how many of these kind of scars there are. Uh, but I'm not trying to paint a portrait of that particular birch tree. I'm just using it as kind of a, a basic something to spur the idea of where the scars are going to be. Because that was kind of in my mind when I actually laid out the shape of the tree. I was working from my photo. Again, it's not a literal portrait of this particular tree. It just helps me get an idea for the feel of... Uh, where and how many of these scars there are and kind of what the what shape they are okay so that's about it
for the tree scars. Maybe one more up here. Okay, then I will clean out the brush. Okay, now this is this is the part that really, um, as far as I'm concerned, makes the birch trees work for me. I had a lot of a lot of uh, requests from people to paint birch trees, um, and I didn't paint them because I really didn't like the way my birch trees looked. I didn't like the way a lot of artists' birch trees looked um, because they tend to paint them in shades of gray, um, and that's first of all really boring. Um, but it also does not um, kind of go with the type of paintings that I do, which are very intense uh, colors. And so I had to spend one winter actually doing what I call making friends with the birch tree, figuring out a way that I could paint birch trees that related somewhat to the rest of my paintings and the way that I painted. And what I fell back on was the way that I painted portraits. And my portraits were always all about light and reflected light. And so the color of light hitting the person's face and then the reflected light on the shadow side or hit coming back to it from other, other elements in the painting. And I realized that that was a way in which I could paint birch trees that related to the rest of my work um, with those bright colors. So what I'm doing here is I'm kind of picking the, the, the color that is going to be in the middle of the birch tree. And what that does is it gradates from a deep kind of grayish blue into a purple and into kind of a magenta as we approach the sun. And then as we move away from the sun, it will then revert back into those purples and then eventually blues. And so, but this gives me kind of the base median uh, local, or not local color, but color of the birch trees. And it also goes from darker to a little bit lighter. And then as we get up here at the top, again, back more into the blues. bluish grays. Actually, I had some of that black mix in with the paint, although that's okay because I want it. I want it, again, to be kind of less colorful as we move up here and more neutralized. So that now gives me a bit of a roadmap for um, the basic middle tone. Oh, I got paint all over my hand here. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I come down along, I'm just going to go lighter and warmer on each side of this towards the sun and darker and cooler in the areas that are away from the sun. And if I do that effectively, all the way up to the top, then it will really give that impression of these sunlit birches. Now this is something too, I don't get it right all in one go. It often takes me, you know, a lot of kind of coming back over to get it to feel exactly right. But I do know that generally the quicker and the looser that I can do this, um, the better it will look. It's almost like golf. Um, the fewer strokes, the better generally. Um, so that's why I don't get too caught up in kind of being super, super persnickety or super, super um, accurate. It, it, it actually works better if that gradation is a little more um, primitive. And you can see the actual brushwork from stroke to stroke. We go in, just check to make sure the uh, the cameras are still recording. 
Okay, so let's come back in with some of that light color here. And so I'm mixing a lot of this on the canvas. And then when it comes to cleaning my brushes often here, I'm not actually, unless I'm going from one color, if I'm going from like the pink to the blue, I will actually clean my brush. But if I'm just going from the magenta to the kind of lighter, warmer pink, I'll just wipe the excess paint off on a piece of paper towel that I have along here for that purpose. And I'm doing this fairly quickly. And you can see already it's starting it's a little too, too light and too pink. But it's already starting to kind of give you that light effect. And also, I always start, if I'm going in with the lighter color, I start up closer to the sun. And as I come down, just the fact that it's blending with what's um, underneath it means it's going to get less and less intense and cooler as we come down here. Now unfortunately it looks like the, uh, the sun keeps coming out and going away so the lighting is kind of somewhat inconsistent. I can try and try and fix that a little bit in post-production but as I mentioned yesterday I don't want to be in a situation where I'm spending hours of doing post-production editing on every video or the uh, daily vlog is going to be over rather quickly if I have to do that. Okay, so I've done kind of from the mid-tone towards the sun. Now I'm going to come back and go from that mid-tone towards the shadow side. So this is going to be kind of more in the blues and again kind of the darkest area of the tree is still going to be in the middle and as we move towards the back side of the tree it's going to get cooler and a little bit lighter because it's picking up all the reflected light. The sun is shining over here, light's bouncing back into this side as well as the light coming from the sky is hitting this side. But this area right in the center is the area that's receiving no light. So it's going to be the darkest value of any of the, this particular tree or any of the trees when you're talking about a backlit situation. And when I first I've talked before about kind of, you know, it's often like you don't find your voice, your voice finds you. Um, I had the, I, I finally kind of stumbled upon this idea as a way of painting birch trees. Um, and it was kind of like a eureka moment. The very first, I mean, I'd, I'd tried a whole pile of other techniques, um, even tried with like a palette knife. And, but when I first did this, um, it came out almost like this and that, I mean, I just knew, okay, this is it. I've found a way that I can paint birch trees um, that relates with the bright, intense colors that I use. And that's that beauty of spending time in process mode. Um, you have to just, you have to just try stuff to see, it's like throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks. Um, but as I said, from the very first time that I tried painting a birch like this, I just knew that, okay, this, this is the method I'm going to be able to use. Now all I have to do is kind of refine it, um, which I've done over the, over the years. I guess the very first birch tree that I painted like this was probably about eight years ago. And this still will need a lot more refinement um, and probably will go quite a bit lighter, at least in the sun area there. Um, but I really wanted to kind of just show you the basic principle about how I paint the birch 
And what this does as well is it really, because this is mimicking the effect of light um, on a tree, um, when you put this together with the sun um, rendered the way it is, all of these things going together, they work together to just really um, trick the eye into believing that this is in fact a light source and it's actually shining out at us. People always say that to me. They always ask if I've, if I've somehow put a hole in the painting and, and have a light shining through when I take the photos and the answer is no. Um, but it's mimicking that effect of the light if you do it across the entire painting and every aspect and every single object is reacting as though it is struck with bright intense light then it's going to fool the viewer's eye and they are going to actually believe that it's a light source shining shining out at them and people will actually squint or a lot of people tell me they think they should put sunglasses on and that's that's the effect I'm going for. So this, again, I will, and what I tend to do is kind of rough in my birch trees like this first, and then decide how many birch trees there are going to be. Like I know that this curved one here is going to be a birch tree, this one's going to be a birch tree, and this one's going to be a birch tree. But I'm not 100% sure about this piece or any of these other trees. So I tend to kind of rough them in like this first and kind of make that assessment one tree at a time. And then once I've kind of resolved all of the trees that are going to be birch trees, um, at that point, then, I'm, then I'll go back in and work over every single tree to just bring it to its act, absolute best. And the way that I like to paint, I, I try to keep an eye on the hole um, while I'm painting. But I want every single element to be done to its absolute best. So when I was painting just the leaf shapes in here, I was really focused on making every stroke a good stroke that looks like a, a fo foliage, not like a particular leaf. So I wasn't painting leaves, but I was painting strokes that were suggestive of leaves or foliage. And when I'm painting the sky shapes, um, or so the sky patterns, I'm really concerned about the branch shapes, the negative, the painting the negative shape to leave the branch, that they all look like really good branches. And then when I get into the birches, I want every birch to be a great birch. And I also want it to relate to everything else in the painting. Um, and I only focus on that one thing at a time, because uh, there's, otherwise you've just got too many balls up in the air. But if I make every brush stroke a good brush stroke, and I make every element in the painting a great element, then at the end of the painting, then we have hopefully a great painting. And at the very end of the painting, that's when I kind of stand back, kind of unfocus my eyes, and kind of look for individual things maybe that are bothering me that need to be fixed, or things that could be made better, or things that are kind of maybe disrupting the unity of the painting. Um, and then I'll look at the entirety of the painting but during the painting process, I just focus on one thing at a time and try to do that to my absolute best. So I think that's it for today. Um, that's how I paint birch trees. So if you like that, give me a thumbs up. If you uh, have any questions or comments, I'd be glad to answer them. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and share this with your friends. I'm Tim Packer, and I thank you for your time.